Right. So welcome today. I'm really excited to talk to my friend. She used to be my neighbor, but she just left me. Her name is Maria Wood Smith, and she owns a business called Fearless Focus. Did I get that correct? You did. Perfect. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, and what I find so interesting about her business, it's all about building confidence. And when I first met Maria, I think it was a year ago, I'm not really sure, out to dinner with our husbands, having a few drinks. I loved what her business was all about because at least at that point, it was all about building confidence and empowering young girls. And I think that your business has changed, but as a mom of two daughters, young daughters, they're not, one is 19, one is almost 22, but still young daughters. It's really, really important to me that they are confident. Right. And honestly, I think the greatest skill that I can give my daughters is confidence, which I won't get in the whole therapy session about me, but it's hard for me to be confident. I've worked on it and I've wanted to make sure that I act confident around my kids just to make sure that they have a confident mom and that rubs off on them. Right. So that's sort of my spiel. And that's what brought me to Maria. And so I'm going to introduce you to Maria Wood Smith. And thank you so much for being with me today. And tell me about yourself, uh, how you got started in this business and sort of your background. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, we did meet about a year ago and it was one of those organic kind of uh, connections. Um, you're very open, you're very authentic, and um, I connected very much okay. with you right away, and, and you care, and I, it shows. So thank you for having me. So um, you're right, Fearless Focus um, is in, we're in our 21st year. I'll give you a quick little history. It used to be called Fashion Focus when I started it 20 years, Ooh. 21 years ago. And it was because it was, I am a former model, um, and we used the runway, and I learned a lot of my confidence through um, and self-acceptance uh, through modeling and being on the runway and just the way that I carried myself was much differently. So that worked for a while, but it was confusing for a lot of people. Um, fashion focus, are you a modeling program? Are you a store? And I struggled, but once people got in here, they knew exactly what I did and they, they don't leave. Once they come, they don't leave. I'm very, very grateful for my return um, clients. So recently, about almost two years ago, we rebranded to Fearless Focus. And the I took away all of the gender, um, you know, sp being specific with girls, because I realized that boys, girls, adults, people in general need empowerment, a place to come Absolutely. to know that they can be themselves and that we can talk about what confidence means, what empowerment means. And I'll get to that. I have a very distinct plan that I go through with my students and, and so forth. So since I've rebranded, it's been wonderful. And it couldn't have come at a better time. There's a lot of changes in the world. And now that I have Fearless Focus and I'm in a bigger studio and I've opened it up to boys with the Powerhouse program, people now understand from the name and the messaging. Exactly. I love Powerhouse. Yeah, I'm power that down. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I started that uh, year 2000, and it has been, um, like I said, I'm in my 21st year. It's been my life's passion, and I started it because, like you uh, said, you know, um, I struggled with my confidence, and really, what I wanted to make the point sort of early on in this conversation with you is that I'm going to give you tips on how to be confident, but none of that can come without self-acceptance, self-love, and self-awareness. So to me, that is the crux of what I do here. It is learning to know yourself. Know yourself. It's it, There's this expression, know thyself, grow thyself. So I, as a 20-something-year-old, really started to struggle the most in my 20s. And, um, and then I had kids. And then I started to realize what I needed to do, the message, you know, what I wanted to be for my children. And I wanted to stop feeling hollow. I didn't really know what I stood for. I modeled and everything was fabulous. And everybody was like, oh, you're, you're a model, you're 5'10". And you start to just kind of get acknowledgement from a physical standpoint. And so- right. You identify just with your physicality. Right. And- and then it just became like blaringly clear that 
I didn't really know who I was. And it's tough when you don't know who you are because it's tough to navigate relationships, friendships, your children, your husband, whatever it is. So once I started having kids, um, I started to realize that as I built my self-confidence and my self-esteem, my self-love, I had very specific things that were working for me that I knew that I could start sharing with people. And because of that, I started Fashion Focus, now known as Fearless Focus. And that's a little bit, that's a little bit of history. For right, it. right. No, I love that. I love that. So yeah. you did you switch to adding the boys during the pandemic? Was, was that, or no, did that just kind of happen naturally? It sort of happened naturally. I um, was lucky to be involved a lot on news, Fox 25 News, NBC News. Back in the day when feel good stories were a thing. Now it's not, that's not oh the way. Oh my goodness, I know, right. You know, they used to do community things. Um, no, I started Powerhouse in 2018 and okay. I started it very specifically because of uh, teen suicide I had read about and I was devastated. It was a 12 year old girl who had committed suicide. Um, and I just sat there in despair after reading the story and thought, what can I do? And I'm like, wait a minute, this is what I do. I can offer free programming. So I started Powerhouse, it, it got it together in a month and I opened it to boys and girls of all ages so they could understand that they're not alone, that, that struggling with who you are and struggling with self-confidence and where you belong is a rite of passage, but you're not alone. And there are steps that I can help them with to help them find themselves. So. That's when I opened it up to boys. Um, I also, my um, client, I know one of your questions for me was going to be my client. Um, your client uh, base, yeah. Client yeah. base. Oh, um, yeah, it's uh, boys, girls, teens, parents, women, um, you name it. I do it. I, I, I do. And, and what I'm most proud of, Linda, is that for 21 years, my messaging has never, ever deviated from what I do. I have Which is the authenticity too. It's the authentic yeah, I, authenticity of the program. Right. It, it's just, if you look in my past, my social media past, everything we've done has stayed consistent and it's been a successful formula, which I'm proud to say um, is homegrown. So I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's interesting. You mentioned teen suicide and I don't know if it was around when I was young or it was less prevalent. Uh, for me, when I watched 13 Reasons Why, it must have been two years ago now, and I only watched it because my daughter watched it. It scared me so much to know that she watched that show. And I don't know if you saw it, but it was a very good program. I, I feel weird saying very good. Uh, I feel like if anything was going to happen to these kids, everything happened that could happen to kids. So, But it really made me realize that this is a big epidemic today maybe it was then but especially now and we have to talk about it and like you said i always focus on girls being confident because i have daughters but mm -hmm. we shouldn't the boys don't need to be pushed to the wayside they're just as important they need to be built up and confident and so that they can go out and be great productive men in society so i love that the other thing is what i was one of the reasons i reached out to you is I have a lot of followers that are fitness instructors, primarily females. And one of the big things that is super, super important as a fitness instructor or a fitness presenter, important thing is confidence, even though deep down we are shaking in our boots. So I'm constantly teaching or mentoring new instructors that no matter how scared you are, you have to walk into that room like a boss, not arrogant, but just like a boss, because if you give off that you are fearful, the people in the room will know that, and then it, it could all go downhill from there. So that's sort of like the angle that I'm coming from. But again, I have two daughters that I want to be confident. They're both getting older. They're going to be starting to interview. It's so, so important to be confident and to be able to communicate. So that's, we're talking about confidence and everybody here is deterred, fake it to you fake it till you make it. So I tell fitness instructors, you have to walk in there and you have to fake it till you make it. And that's a super, super important part. But I love that what you said about self-acceptance, 
because, and I'm sure you'll tell me more about that. For me, what that means is I have to be willing to let go and just be myself. Uh, when I was a young instructor, I was trying to be like so-and-so. I was trying to be like Susie or Mary because they get a lot of followers, but you can't try to be like somebody else. You have to discover and accept your authentic self and you have to be willing to share it. You have to be willing to put yourself out there, even right. if you think it might feel weird or you think somebody's going to make fun of you for lack of a, a better term. So, so what else are sort of your strategies beyond self-acceptance or once you accept yourself? Well, it's, it's really a, a pretty, um, you know, like I said, the, the, the course that I, I, I have always um, laid out for my students and for myself is, you know, you, I can't make you confident. Nobody can make you confident. Your parents can't, your grandparents can't, they can't, you know, throw compliments at you. Um, you have to do the work. So confidence can't happen though, until you do the real work, which is the inside work, which is what we deal with here. So anytime a student or a private lesson client or any of my classes, what we always start with is who are you? What do you stand for? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are you proud of? Your accomplishments, words to describe you. It's kind of like studying yourself. And until I started to do that, I didn't really even understand it either. You know, you just sort of start to become what you think everybody thinks of you or expects right. of you instead of kind of locking and loading on who you are and being authentic. And it's not easy, Linda, that's what I will tell you. You know, a lot of times everybody, parents will say to me, you know, she's been coming for a while, but she's still, and I'm like, listen, confidence is, you know, you know, the, the old cliche, confidence is not a destination, it's a journey. We never truly arrive at the ultimate confidence, but day by day, month by month, year by year, if you are allowing yourself to grow and know yourself, you will get better and better at that authentic, true self that you are. And you won't care what other people comment right. on or care or, or say about you. And, and you mentioned a very important thing that we always talk about here is comparison is the thief of joy. Stay, yes. in, stay in your lane. When you're looking over your shoulder at what this one's doing or what that one's doing or how many likes you have, or, you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, anything else about anybody else, you're stealing your accomplishments. So I love that. The first thing we do is we, we help them get to know themselves. We, we do some of the mantras about know thyself, grow thyself. Comparison is a thief of joy. Stay in your lane. We talk about posture and, and, and your physical appearance being the messaging that you send before you even open your mouth. You know this as well as I do, that a strong presence walks into the room and says volumes about you before you've said a word. So posture is important and it can be on some levels, it is that holding yourself tall and keeping your chin up and looking people in the eye, even though you have butterflies. And you're, you're making like, me sit oh, up God. taller. <laughs> yeah, They're looking at me, do I have something in my teeth? No, you just own the moment. It's called being present and stop being in your head. And that's what a lot of kids do. And that's even what a lot of adults do. I deal with adults here a lot too. And it's, un, it's, it's deprogramming, especially women, deprogramming us from thinking that the only thing of value we have is the way we look. We're so much more than how we look. But because of our society and because of social media and these poor kids growing up mm. in this time, um, yeah it's all around us. It's like, just, it's all that they see. So it's, we practice on the runway here and I'll show you a shot of my studio later. We walk with a book on our head as old fashioned as that might sound. The kids love it. It makes you aware of your presence. It keeps you proud. And the longer you see that image of yourself in a proud, positive way, the mental aspect really starts to kick in. So Beyond that, it's just giving them a place to communicate as well. You mentioned another thing about communicating and being, you know, your words are your words. Your thoughts are your thoughts. Nobody can take those from you. And if they try, you have to have the confidence 
to stand up to your words and to believe in them. And even if somebody doesn't like you for them or, and that's hard for a teenager or an adolescent who's trying to fit or in. Or a 51 year old mom. <laughs> yes. Right, you've got pressure. We all have yes. pressure. You yes. know, the mom's yes. on the soccer field or whatever. Everybody's oh. feeling that. But if we could all just, just take a break, and just be um, okay with each other. And, and another thing, what I love that you're doing, Linda, is that you're, you do a lot of what we do here, which is supporting each other. We can learn from each other. We can okay. lift each other up and we should lift each other up. So right. what you're doing is an important part of keeping a community of powerful women in check with each other and realizing that we are better when we're on each other's side. So right. that's my I TED talk. <laughs> I actually, I know, I just had a conversation with a woman yesterday and um, her kids are younger than mine. And she was asking me, you know, how do I get through this? First of all, just what you said, it's so much pressure as a mom raising all kids in all, no matter where you live. And I just said to her, first of all, I t this is probably bad that you're all going to say, but I said, don't worry so much about the academics because my oldest daughter had a lot of trouble with academics and she's thriving now in college right. and is going to graduate. So it will come. But that's I know that's not easy to hear when so and so's daughter just got an A. There's a lot of that comparison. And I just I said to her, you're doing a Pressure. great job. Like we're all doing a great job. Like it's really, really hard. I don't know the best way to raise kids. I just know the best way to raise my kids. So you raise your kids and I'll raise mine. So if we can just, and I think I learned that very young when I remember somebody else was saying, you have to get your daughter off the bottle at a year. And I think she was 14 months old. <laughs> Why? First of all, my mother, I listened, she was like, don't listen to them. And then right. I decided I'm not going to do that. I know what's best between me and my Where pediatrician, my pediatrician or whoever you have. So the comparison game is huge. And yes, supporting each other is super, super important. We're all doing a good job. It's really hard. It's trusting your instincts too. That's another thing that I, I, I sell, I tell my, my adult clients and my um, my teens, young girls, you have a barometer, you have a gut absolutely, and it, it's usually right. And it, so absolutely. when you deny that visceral feeling of that's wrong, or this feels weird, or that, that hurt my feelings, I'm not sure I want to hang out with that person anymore. You're denying your truth too. And right, so right. trust your gut. Right. I even tell that to my kids. If you're not really sure, what do you, what, what does your gut say? What do you think? And they can usually work it out too. I think right. your gut is a very smart part of your body. Um, I loved what you said about posture. And if I can just dive into that, the funny thing is, so the posture thing feels, uh, and I remember I'll, somebody else, another instructor that that I looked up to years ago was teaching Pilates. And she said, we're all rounded, which is a huge part of, we're all rounded right now anyway from being on, on our computers. And she said, stand up taller. And she said, you'll look more confident too. And that stuck with me. Now I say it to my entire class because yep. just from a physicality standpoint, from what you're saying, when you stand up tall with your shoulders back and down, which just so you know, it's very hard for me to stand that tall and walk into a room without feeling like I'm trying to act like a badass. But there's a difference between walking in confident and without trying to be, I think I'm better than you. So that's a fine line. And I know that for people that are insecure or worry about trying to be a show off, this is hard, but it's super, super important. And I teach it in my classes because when we are hunched over like this, we are just contributing to muscle imbalances and then we're, we're contributing to back pain and joint pain. So there's two different reasons to stand tall, as you say. It's standing tall from a physical muscular, uh, muscular standpoint, but it's right. also just about that confidence and walking in and feeling confident. Do you ever teach the Wonder Woman thing? That's, that's something yeah. I, right? Yeah. And I really have done that. Like, because right. I've been to, I've been to seminars also, uh, you know, same thing, how to be a better presenter, how to communicate, how to walk into a room, how to make a presentation in front of your colleagues or your, your superiors. And they say, go into the bathroom and do that super. And I've done it. I've yeah. done it. I also am blasting music usually. And 
um, some, you know, yeah. deep, dark ACDC or something, but <laughs> all of those things, um, work. I also noticed that I follow your page and I see some of your girls, you have them on stage doing a dance or doing a song, or you're trying to break them out of their comfort zone with something that they enjoy. Is that correct? Have I seen Absolutely. that? Absolutely. We, um, you know, I'll show you a, a scan of the studio soon, but the runway is a powerful tool that I use here. And although it may seem a little intimidating for some at first, once you get up there and once you start to feel your power, and that's what this program in the studio was all about. We give our clients an opportunity to step outside of the rat race, come in here, feel their power, feel the love and support of your classmates here, know that you're worthy because sometimes the world beats us down and, and oh, certainly yes. in school, you know, kids get beaten down a lot um, and, and they feel their power in here, then you can't get them off of it. And, and, and that's wonderful. So you put the music up and you allow them to express themselves. And in a world that's very structured for kids and you've got, to, you've got to follow this path and sit in this chair and take this class, go to this college or whatever, it can be really tough to learn how to be yourself. But this right. is the perfect place to do it. And from that, I feel like our students grow and they get more used to feeling good about they're, if they're quirky or weird or silly, it's okay, you know, and if it, it's just that hour that they're here, it's a release. And that's what I think is really important for them. Right. But the quirky power is thing. good. Quirky is good. What, uh, you showed me that. I think, can you show me that sign behind you now? Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, quirky is good. Unique is good, but I know we all want to fit in, but what yeah, does that say? Oh, the world needs who you were made to be. And it's sort of our um, mantra here. Um, do you want me to do a quick tour right now? Yes, show us your, so this is your office or your studio. Do you, right. where, where are you located? Uh, right in Pembroke. Um, I don't know if you can see me here. So I'm right in Pembroke, I'm on Route Look at, she's got a sexy blue dress. Look at those legs. <laughs> I've got my, yeah, I've got my Diane von Furstenberg dress on, um, my it. power, you know. <laughs> Another thing I talk to a lot of um, moms or, that are my clients or whatever is that feeling of um, that dressing for success gives you, feeling that, you know, having a good color on, having a, a power, power dress on or wearing a little bit higher of a heel, that is not wrong. And even if somebody says to you, why are you so dressed up today? You owe nobody an explanation except I wanted to dress up. I feel great. So so this right. is, I love uh, it. That, that's, uh, that's the runway. I'll kind of show you from this angle. This is sort of the, the T and this is where we talk to the kids and my clients about walking tall and proud, thinking about where you're going, being poised, being in control. And that's, I'm sorry, my, uh, my hand is shaking so much um, okay. because I was talking, I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands. <laughs> um, but poise and posture, they go hand in hand. And what I really try to express to everybody is the, the power of poise and how staying in control, thinking before you speak, thinking before you act. And, and, and you said something, Linda, like the difference between being arrogant and being confident. There's a very distinct difference and it, it will come across if you haven't figured out which one you want to be. So if you figured out, I want to be confident and I want to be sure, there's no way anybody's going to misinterpret that because confidence is silent. Insecurities are loud. So when you walk into a room, and if you're walking into a room proud and tall with good posture, but you're like, hey, everybody, I'm awesome. We're going to have an awesome class because I'm awesome. You know, whatever. That's that's obviously the that's being a little bit ridiculous about it. I but, said that yesterday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, yeah. But if you walk in self-assured and prepared and pleasant and you just are people will be drawn to you. So remember that saying, confidence is silent and securities are loud. And we all know people who have insecurities and they're the loudest people in the room. Right. They're the loudest, you know, I'm, you know, I have this and I went here and I did this and I drive this and blah, 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 blah. It, it, it doesn't need to be said if you believe it. I, I do. I just heard you say prepared. I think prepared is super, super important. And being prepared is what makes me confident. So mm -hmm. little things like showing up on time, having your notes, if you have a note, being prepared, as opposed to scrambling 
all of those things, being prepared will make you more confident and it won't show arrogance. You'll just be, I am prepared, I am ready. So that's another thing. If fitness instructors are listening here, you walk into the room, hopefully you are prepared. Sometimes we have a notebook. I'm one of these people that does have a notebook with all of my notes on it. Put the notebook down. Half the time your students, if people are taking your class, if they see you have a notebook, they know that you've prepared and that you're organized. So that's not a knock against you. That's them. That's you telling them that you took this seriously. You prepared to be here. And this goes in whatever context it is. You mm -hmm. took this seriously. You care. You prepared and you are ready to rock. Right. And there and, and, and there's no harm, no foul with that. Who, who can anybody wants to call you out on that? That's their problem, right, <laughs> you know, right, right. and that, you know, that's that's another thing, you know, you know, in the, in, in the course of working with people and, you know, um, getting them prepared for their putting their best selves out there because it's intimidating for, for especially women. You know, when I when I work with women who are older and have maybe entering the workforce again or right. have raised their children and now sort of feel a little bit like, where do I fit in? Where do I go? Um, you know preparing them for the obvious that people will recognize a difference in you and that's okay. Somebody compliments you, you say, thank you. Somebody gives you accolades for what you've done. You say, thank you. I worked hard. There is nothing wrong with owning that, um, the, the accolade or that you've, that you've really tried hard for something and you're proud of yourself or if they ask you, why did you get so dressed up? People ask me all the time, why do you wear heels? You're already tall enough. And I go, wait a second. I'm pretty sure I can wear heels if I want to wear heels. Like, so I never give them the, or they'll come up to me and they'll say, wow, you're tall. And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> you know, like it's just kind of, you've got to be prepared for those moments. And I don't let it chip away at me. I right, never right. believe when somebody says something to me that I feel a little off color or a little like that was kind of a back end handed compliment or whatever. I never take it personally. I just, I know who I am and right, right. that's what it I usually is other people. Sometimes people saying something off color or something to you is usually what they're feeling. That's usually their stuff, right? right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's, so one of the other things that I, I want to make sure that I, I tell you for your fitness people or forever who's, who's watching. Um, in terms of what confidence builders are, um, I kind of touched on the knowing yourself and um, um, making sure that you're communicating. But one of the biggest things that I, I have found with teens and with moms, and it's something we learn as a child, sometimes through our own parents, sometimes through just life in general, but negative self-talk negative. I'm not good enough. I'm too fat. I'm too short. I'm, I'm not educated enough. It's this, I, oh, sh I'm such an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. And oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's why that lady looked at me weird. First of all, get out of your head. And if you find yourself talking negatively about yourself a lot, check yourself. It's the best way. It's the best path to starting to unwind some of the bad habits that you might be passing on to your children, right. but not if you don't even have children, it's not good to talk to yourself that way. We read about it all the time now. We're getting to a better place in society where there's a lot more information out there and you look anywhere um, on, uh, you know, on any study of confidence building or what, what does it take to be confident and self-assured, they'll go right to the negative talk. You've got to, and, and you know, it's hard, Linda, sometimes it's hard to retrain our brains when we become so used to acting a certain way, but it's worth right. it. So you got to become aware of it. If you're somebody who constantly puts yourself down, then you make yourself aware of it and then start turning your brain in a new path. So you stop yourself because that wears you down after a while. Right. You're right. not kind to yourself. You know. How is anybody, everyone else going to be kind to you? Well, there's, right. there's my dog. Hold on. Pause for <laughs> pause for Brady. Um, Taylor, train your brain. Say hi to Maria. Hi. Hello. Hey, Sarah, I'll cut this out. Well, we're doing a little talk, and then I'll. Um... I came out early because I've called you like a thousand times. Well, my phone is on. Do not disturb. Lovely to see you, Taylor. <laughs> That's my daughter. Um, I, I don't think I'm as bad as 
talking negative to myself. I have accepted that I don't make the bed every day and I don't care. <laughs> I have accepted that my house does not look perfect except for when I'm going to be on camera. So I've sort of accepted that I'm going to live my life and not have to measure up to what everyone else says we're supposed to measure up to because the more people that I talk to we're all kind of in the same boat we're all struggling with different things so so you're right negative self-talk it has to go away we have to accept who we are and it's like everything else in the world if you want to be more confident you have to work on it you have to work on it right it doesn't if it doesn't come natural because whatever it is i'm not going i'm not going to blame my parents i come from a wonderful family right. but my parents didn't say you're great you should be confident they were just trying to put food on the table right, <laughs> you know what I right, mean? Right. they were just trying to feed us all there's there's right. eight of us um so so it's it's nobody's fault if you want to be more confident you have to accept yourself and you have to do some self-love and some work on yourself where can people get in touch with you? Uh, and I will I will write all of this in the comments. But but your business is called Fearless Focus. And what are your Instagrams or where can they find you? Um, good question. Um, first of all, one of the biggest mantras I say here is confidence is not given; it's earned. So remember that yes. that confidence that. is not given; it's earned. I'm at fifteen. Everything good. Everything good is earned. I think everything good yeah. is earned, not yeah. given. So where are you? Um, fifteen Columbia Road, and that's in Pembroke. Um, Massachusetts, I, if you're watching yeah, this Massachusetts from. and Fearless Focus Progue, P-R-O-G, because program was taken. Fearless Focus Progue is my Instagram. Um, my my website is um, fearlessfocusprogue.com. And um, what else did you want to, what, what else, where can they? I, I think that was it, just whatever you wanted to share. I mean, the most important thing I wanted to talk to you about today is I did not know you had four dogs. So yeah. tell me about your dogs. Well, they're not all mine. So um, oh. Gracie is mine. Um, my son has Finn, uh, my oh. daughter has, uh, Bailey and I do babysit them a lot. Um, we, we don't no longer have Elle, um, Ellie, I'm sorry, her name is Ellie. Um, but, um, so I do babysit my Gracie is mine though, but my daughter's and my son's dog, I do babysit and their loves. Finn is a Weimaraner, uh, Bailey is adopted in a, in a mix and Gracie is adopted in a mix. And Michael I saw and I you have... holding one the other day. Who was that? She's 10. That's Gracie. That's my baby. Yeah, she's, she's my baby. It. We adopted her 10 years ago. And Michael and I, my husband and I, uh, we just moved to Hanover. That's why I left. Um, I left Hingham. But um, as soon as we settle a little bit more, one of the things that we promised that we would do is to get dogs. We we have never owned a dog, the two of us. You're so. going to take the big step. We're going to take the big step. It's like having kids. But, but yes, we're, yes. we're not quite ready to do that because I do babysit the the. the the doggies all the time, but I love it. Right, right, right. Yeah. And one more important thing you need to tell your husband, Michael, mm -hmm. and because my daughter, we went down the Cape the other day and we went to a small grocery store. We love the grocery store rings uh, in Dennis. And she said, can you get me some cookies? I'm in the mood for some cookies. So I went in and they always have these super expensive cookies or Chips Ahoy, but then they had Pates. Are they Pates cookies? Pates, Pates, I did, I'm Pates. cracking up that you're bringing Pates. this up. <laughs> right, and, and I was like, Michael always loved those, you know, oh, he had them, he had them at the restaurant one night and I was like, and he was like, they're the best. And he shared them with all of us. They're a little crispy. Taylor was like, they're good, but they're a little crispy. So they're crispy, yeah. uh, shout out to Tate's chocolate Tate's chip cookies. cookies. <laughs> they're so delicious. These oh, are the me. things I remember about people that I yeah. loved what you did. And I love that your husband loved chocolate chip cookies. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Maria, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope we get together in person soon. Soon, and uh, yeah. I really appreciate you being here with me. Thank you. I appreciate you having me and uh, best of luck. And I, I'll see you soon. I know I will. And I'll yeah. bring some tates. I'll bring some tates. Bring some tates. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thanks, Maria. Yep.